ask is, if we have to give these bastards our lives, we give them hell before we do! The tragedy of our day is the climate of fear in which we live. Talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. I'm going to ask the congressman to withdraw that comment and tell us that he really mean that. I don't know what I said. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. The Bible demands that certain people be put to death. Thieves were possessed weapons of mass destruction. 9 11 attacks were carried out by Al Qaeda. I remember that with that smoke. We are still here! Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm All right, all right, all right. Let's try and make the best of a bad situation. If you're listening to this in the future, I apologize for the lack of professionalism that was the attempt at live broadcasting the show tonight. I don't know what the problem is. We have never had this kind of pr- trouble before. We uh, we started out t- just our typical, you know, streaming out to all these different services. Everything was going smooth and silky and whatnot, and... Then we got kicked out and kicked out again and kicked out again. And uh, we literally have had the call dropped uh, about pff, probably seven or eight times so far. We tried just streaming to YouTube and just streaming to Facebook and nothing seems to be working. So instead, we're going to record this and release it tomorrow morning as just a pre-recorded anti-news episode. Because we want to make sure you guys know what's going on in the world, uh, even if we can't give it to you in an interactive way. So, Craig, how, how are you doing? Oh, I'm about to fall asleep now at this point. Oh. You poor well sweep a baby. I'm not. I'm just bored. Oh, yeah, me too. Um yeah, I I <laughs> my intention too long. tonight was to start the news about an hour ago. We we've, we've literally been fighting this for about an hour. So, um hopefully this recording at least works but if you if you're down if you downloaded this and this is your first time listening to the show uh welcome to the anti-news this is where we uh cover current events that are going on in the world in our own angry dark comedic twist and um we uh we like to drink the drinks and smoke the smokes and have a chill time when we are allowed to have a chill time but tonight it's not it's not going as chill as as i would prefer not um, too many chills being had right now. No, few few chills. Apparently, my uh, technology need needed a drink tonight or something. It, it's on strike. It's it's angry or I had because too much of, to drink. Yeah, there's that. It's just it's outraged by this blue wave that we just got hit with in the the election it, last week. Do you know what it really is? Hmm. It's the it's the ghost of Stanley oh. haunting us. R.I.P. Stanley. Yeah, and when we were trying to stream out live, we had one person comment again who was just outraged, like, screw Stanley, he ripped off this guy and that guy's work, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, really? That Now is the time to complain that he might have plagiarized a little bit over the years? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know or care about Stanley's plagiarism allegations. And he's had sexual misconduct allegations against him. We're going to focus on his plagiar- supposed plagiarizing of somebody else's work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I know he's a uh, an icon in the comic book genre, to say the um, least. Name, did name have... all the other comic book guys that you know. Right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Gerard Way. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't count. You knew him before he was a comic book guy. Right. Um. So my, I had seen a post earlier saying. Oh, poor Stan Lee. Now all the uh, Avengers movies won't be the same <laughs> because he had such a major acting right. <laughs> role in those movies. Yeah, he uh, had a cameo in every single Marvel movie, to my knowledge. and um, Like 30 seconds or yeah, at most. It was always just a funny two-second 
cameo deal and then moving on. Um, but yeah, uh, it sucks. I, I don't have any conspiracy theories here for, for this celebrity death. The dude was 95 years old and still working his ass off every single day. So good on him. I, I've maybe, maybe he faked his death. Yeah, <laughs> he did. And he's going to reemerge as, um, some sort of super villain or something and, uh, <laughs> have bionic limbs. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, so I, I don't have much to say there. Obviously, I, w- I would imagine that's what he died of, is being ancient. And uh, the dude worked his butt off. Like, he worked every day of his life and never slowed down from the day he emerged as a breakthrough artist till the day he died, which was today, November 12th, 2018, at 95 years old. So good on you. I, I don't know anything about your allegations if you, if you were the creep then yeah you know, I, I mean the allegations that were raised against him weren't enough to uh, i don't even remember what they were so they weren't enough to be like harvey weinstein like ruin his career or anything he was still appearing in all the movies he was never like fired they still had him in cameos and all that stuff so i imagine right. it wasn't anything too uh devastating and uh yeah so that's that but the the this this blue wave you spoke of mm-hmm mm-hmm I mean, they're on the verge. They are writing impeachment papers as we speak right now because the House and the Senate and all the governors of all the states of all the country yeah. are well, Democrat what's funny, now. What's funny is we're going to poke fun at the the Democrats for saying it's going to be this big blue wave and the Democrats are going to get both the House and the Senate, but the the right were saying the same thing. They were saying, yeah. well, obviously because of Trump, we're going to have the House and the Senate. Guess what? You're both wrong. Shut up. Stop yes, well, listening it's, to polls. It's balance where it probably should be at this point. Yeah. It, it probably shouldn't be a t- another two years of a red house, a red freaking Senate, and a fully, almost fully Republican leaning um, Supreme Court because right. corruption just comes from that on either side if you have it just straight one-sided there's there's no checks and balances there so with great um, power it, comes great responsibility stanley sure sure <laughs> did did he actually write that or? i don't know i'm sure he stole uh, it from somebody else freaking <laughs> plagiarist um so this in the impeachment thing that has been the topic of conversation since um this election process started how they were going to take over Senate and immediately impeach Trump. The article I have in front of me is talking about the House, the newly blue House. It's, this article on Bloomberg says impeaching Trump is an option top Democrats don't want to touch. OK. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> All right. So basically everything you were shouting about. Right. We're not going to do that. Surprise, surprise. Just like right. uh, Trump saying he was going to lock Hillary up as soon as he got into office two years ago. Mm-hmm. Then he realized, wait, I can't do that. Hmm. So this says impeaching Donald Trump may be the dream of some Democrats, but party leaders poised to take control of the House of Representatives won't go there even after the president ousted Attorney General Jeff Sessions. This is a constitutionally perilous moment for our country and for the president. Representative Gerald Nadler, Nadler, who's expected to become chairman of the House Judiciary Committee in January, said after Trump forced Session to resign on Wednesday and named Matthew Whitaker a critic special counsel, a critic of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia inquiry as acting attorney general. Well, why why they're all up in arms because he forced uh Jeff Sessions to resign that's his response his his right to fire the person he hired in the first place right. that he has that ability um it goes on to say Nadler and other house democratic leaders are still stopping short of citing the constitutional power of impeachment that they could wield and that same party and and that same party activists are demanding they pursue. It's a move that could backfire by coming off as a partisan overkill and prove futile because impeachment by the House would be unlikely to result in the removal of the president by the Senate. 
where the Republicans increased their majority in Tuesday elections. Now is not the time to consider impeachment. Representative Staney Hoyer of Maryland, the number two House Democrat, said in a statement, Special Counsel Mueller must be allowed to complete his investigation. The president's decision to ask for Attorney General Sessions' re resignation underscores the need for Congress to take action to pro protect that investigation. So it sounds like they're saying, yeah, we don't really have a leg to stand on right now, so we're mm -hmm. not even going to try at this point. Yeah, uh, I mean, it just goes to show you, once again, everybody's all talk. Be them blue or red, they mean nothing that they say. They say things to get people to vote certain ways, and as soon as they get into office, they say, oh, that thing, uh, I, I, know that, I know that we were like really, really certain and really using big definitives on things that we were planning on doing, but now that we're here, I mean, that sounds like a lot of paperwork and a lot of things that mean we're going to have to like do the job that you hired us to do. So, <laughs> nah. Well, like they've realized which I realized before, is that if they're not in control of Senate, laws go through the House first. And once once they're passed through the House, they have to be approved by the Senate. So it doesn't matter what the, the House passes or what, what indictments or impeachment paperwork they push up, the House still, ha or the Senate still has the final say. And being predominantly, even more predominantly Republican now, they're going right. to be like, yeah, let's file that one in the shredder. Right. I mean, you know, they're not going to get anywhere with it. It's just going to be a a big waste of tax dollars, which they are usually okay with doing anyway. So, oh yeah, I don't know why it's that big of an that's issue. It's their favorite thing to do. Anyway, um, in other news, on the election, uh, Illinois, where I live, uh, not where you live, uh, we elected as governor Mr. Pritzker, who's a Democrat. Eh. Not a, big, okay. not a big fan of that idea, but uh, however, you know, Pritzker wants to legalize recreational marijuana nearly right away in Illinois. Mm. You hear about this? Oh. You hear about this? I did. I saw the post. I think you posted it. Mm -hmm. Sounds um, sounds like a, a win to me. Sounds like a win, and uh, I, I mean, every time I bring this up to other people, they're like, oh, well, since he's a Democrat, he's going to tax the hell out of it, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, here's the okay. thing. They're going to tax the hell out of it. That's the only reason they want to find a way to legal. The only reason they haven't legalized it is because they haven't quite found yeah. the perfect way to tax the hell out of it yet. Yeah, and uh, my my big issue with people who say that, yes, I have a problem with them taxing the hell out of it. Um, I'm not in favor of taxes in any stretch. But uh, you've got all these people that are like pro-weed, pro-legalization of marijuana, and they use the, these arguments like, oh, what about the people in jail for no for no, like, Real reason, these people are in, I mean, this is my argument too, these people are in cages for uh, for um, nothing, for having a plant, a, a happy, sleepy plant. Um, and they're ripped out of their homes and families are torn apart because, for some reason, this is still illegal. Uh, the, the people use that argument, but then they say things like, oh, taxation, blah, 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 blah. It's like, isn't what's more important here not that you're going to have to spend a little bit more for your weed, isn't shouldn't it be these people are gonna be out of jail like these people are right. gonna get to live their lives now um even though they, they're gonna get out of jail but they gotta pay a fee to get out of jail well you see, i'm yeah I'd, probably not but even if that were the case i'd pay any fee <laughs> i'd figure out a way to make it happen to get out of jail but let me let me read some of this um let's see uh this is coming from fox 32 so you know it's legit um Governor-elect <laughs> Governor J.B. Pritzker uh, said Wednesday he wants to legalize recreational marijuana in Illinois almost immediately after being sworn in next year. So this is like the day after the election. <laughs> he's like, like number one on his agenda. Right, which I, I was pretty happy about. Uh, I mean, he's an Illinois governor, so he's going to be in jail for something within a year, so he better hurry up and get on it. But, right. Um, uh, quote, that, that's something we can work on nearly right away. End quote. I don't know why that had to be a quote. Uh, Pritzker told Fox 32's Mike Flannery. Uh, he also said uh, he will look at vacating arrest records for those who have been convicted of crimes involving marijuana. Of course you should. Like, 
Like that, there's debate around whether or not people in jail for something that is no longer a crime should stay in jail. Of course right. they shouldn't stay in jail. Why are what are they being punished for? If I'm allowed to do it in my house now, why are they in jail for doing the same thing a couple of years ago? And why congest up the prison system with people right. that if they had waited another year, they wouldn't have been busted for it. Right. And, <laughs> why keep and, what's the point of keeping them in jail? Right. And we are a freaking bankrupt state. Like get them out of there. Stop stop paying for them and once they're back into society, we'll have more people paying your taxes and uh, feeding the beast. Not that I approve mm-hmm. of taxes, but hey, if it's going to be there, then let's let's do it. Uh, quote. What, what really what really probably happened is this governor who just got elected, JB probably that, that night probably got busted for pot. And he's like, you know what I need to do? <laughs> I need to legalize weed real yeah. quick before this hits the books. Yeah, he was celebrating. And he was like in the cop car, and they were like, "Can we get a quote? I'm gonna legalize weed tomorrow." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's exactly how it went down. Uh, he says, "I definitely want to look at all those arrest records. If we're going to legalize recreational marijuana, then we shouldn't have all the what I think are challenges in our uh, our criminal justice system. You know, still existing." Uh, people sitting in prison for things that are currently legal. Exactly. Well put. Uh, the governor-elect can legalize recreational marijuana simply by signing legislation passed by lawmakers uh, in the General Assembly. Illinois residents do not have to vote to approve the measure. Thank God. But- yeah, I saw some of the comments on your post, and it's younger people like in our circle here, and they're like, well, now it's just going to be a state of a bunch of potheads. Well, isn't it already a state of a bunch of potheads? I grew right. up in Illinois. Everybody I knew was a pothead. Right. Like Every who, single person I hung out with was a pothead. Who in Illinois who is going to be a pothead isn't already a pothead. Like, exactly. I, and, it's, and my response to that obviously is like, you know, uh, we have legal alcohol. Is everybody a filthy drunk in Illinois because we have alcohol? They are. What makes you they think are. that people are a filthy morals... drunk? I, I am, even though I'm drinking water tonight. I'm not even drinking caffeine tonight. I'm not taking any wow. risks anymore. Um, I've got alcohol mixed with caffeine. Does that count? Do, do they counter each other? When we do the, uh, yeah, I think they do. I think that's uh, four loco syndrome uh, where it speeds oh, up your heart rate and slows it down and then you die. That's horrible. That's why they legally had to take the caffeine out of Four Loco a couple years ago. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, so there's all this with the the weed and everything. Um, the good on him. Uh, I I don't think it says anything about the taxing or anything like that. I don't really care. Pay a little bit more for your weed or go. I there. If you're buying it from a dude illegally already, um, and it's cheaper, keep. I, I suppose you could keep buying it from him because if you get caught with it, you could just say it's legal. You. It, I mean, do you have to show your receipt if you get caught with weed to prove that it's not black market weed? I, I don't understand how that's going to work. But, I mean, it's the same as, like, moonshine. Is moonshine legal? I don't know. But people do it, and it's pretty widely accepted as a thing that's not that big a deal. Right. He And moonshine, the illegal kind, is absolutely del- delicious. Moonshine takes a hit when they legalized moonshine, and they right. um, didn't legalize everyone to make it on their own that's where it's illegal it's like when you sell beer and stuff like that it's illegal yeah. like home home brewed beer but um when um there was one I'm i not think making it was making a sale i'm giving you a donation and you're a friend that is nice enough to give me weed <laughs> <laughs> no um moonshine though was i think i think it was jim beam was given the rights to pr- mass produce moonshine and then it just went shit downhill really fast because they regulated the hell out of it and yeah. it just tastes like garbage and it's not true like white lightning freaking moonshine that you get in the backwoods of North Carolina. Can you say all that again but in Hank Hill's voice? <laughs> it's not your it's, white lightning. It's not the white lightning. <laughs> Dang old the good the good stuff. <laughs> You get, you get in the backwoods of up in the mountains. <laughs> All right, this is going poorly. Um, also, uh, in other news on Pritzker, I don't have a story pulled up for it, but there, there, there was a story about uh, Pritzker talking about um, 
putting a mileage tax on cars, which, <laughs> yay, Democrats. Uh, this is where I jump off the taxation bandwagon hardcore because right. uh, he, well, it was, it was a question that was, apparently it was something that he, I guess, brought up in his running. I didn't follow his running, so I don't know. But uh, there was like some sort of, what's it called, where man speaks in front of people, <laughs> assembly or whatnot. Um, campaign, um, something like that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what talk. are those called? <laughs> a rally, a rally, sure. There, a rally, rally. Um, <laughs> it, it's getting late. It's like eight fifteen now. But um, yeah, he he was doing this rally, giving speeches, and he took some questions. And a guy came up and asked the question. Um, you, you you've proposed this uh, this mileage tax. Uh, you realize that this is a state full of agriculture, full of farmers who have to drive nonstop and truckers and all these things like the heart of America where it's all driving. How is that going to work out? That That's going to like cripple everybody's businesses. And Pritzker uh, said that he's looking at this. I don't remember which state it is, Missouri or somebody who's doing it. Um, and uh they're testing it out to see if it works, and it it's literally where you put a box in your car that tracks your mileage, and you have to pay a tax per mile. If that goes through, screw you, I'm leaving, uh, legal Bicycles. weed or not. <laughs> Bicycles. And I don't drive anywhere, but I, I don't support that kind of garbage. I mean, tax, tax other, I, I don't know. It's the, He's probably from, like... The city where he lives in a high-rise apartment three blocks from City Hall or the governor's mansion. or I don't I don't know how things work these days. He's probably like <laughs> blocks from his work. Right. <laughs> and um, he probably just walks to work. Or he, he, he actually now he probably has a govy taking him around. And they're not going to tax the govies because that doesn't even make sense. Here, let's put a tax on this government vehicle to pay back. For the government right. vehicles. Yeah, it's it's crap. Um, so there's that. that. That's really all I have on that. Hopefully hopefully he's not just a taxation Nazi. I understand why he would be like that, um, especially being a Democrat. But he's, he's coming, he's taking control of a state that is like in the freaking gutter. Like we have zero money for infrastructure or anything. And he even said in his response, he was like, we got to get money from somewhere, you guys. Like, I'm not saying I'm doing this, but our state is falling apart. We got to figure this out somehow. And if you, he didn't say this, but if you have a better idea, let's, let's talk. Um, I, I have plenty, um, like a, a pay, a pay cut in some of these politicians and, uh, <laughs> like the governor Maybe. pay, you can start there. Uh, there was one, um, I was reading through some of the, uh, the issues that different the different politicians running uh, stood for and everything. I was reading their political views and everything before I went in to vote. Uh, doing a little bit of last minute research on some of these locals and um, uh, one of the libertarians, she was running for I don't know treasurer or something like that. I don't even remember, but she said like like every, you hear all these people that are like, well, we're gonna lower taxes, we're gonna we're going to cut costs. We're going to be more transparent, blah, 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 blah. Everybody almost straight up says the same thing as each other. But she was like, um, I'm going to uh, gonna cut our spending, cut our costs, starting with my own salary. Like she was going to cut her wage first and then start looking at other people and see where we can cut these costs. I'm like, that's the person I want, a public that makes servant. The uh, most sense. Yeah, somebody who is just wanting to better – the state and not, you know, get a good paying job that she can be a career politician for the rest of her life in. Well, that's like this um, newly elected Ocasio-Cortez in New York, um, yep. how she was saying how she can't even on um, her, is she House or Senate? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, she was saying how on her pay, she still can't afford an apartment. She's yeah, that bringing was, in like a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a right. year, and right. she can't afford a. I mean, I don't know what the going rate for apartments are there, but she's making well over like four times what I'm making. Right. 
and she can't afford an apartment there. Yeah, and I, I actually like, what called are you into spending uh, your money on. I called into the Quite Frankly podcast and uh, brought up this article uh, with Frank, and uh, I mean, it's clear what they're trying to do because yeah, basically she she's saying that she won't be able to afford an apartment in D.C. until she starts her job there. Um, total BS in my opinion. Total BS, and uh, they're it's like they're spinning this into like, see, she's one of us. She's just a poor. Uh, broke bartender, and Frank was like, I know where she lives. She's not poor. Like, where she lives is right. not a cheap place to have an apartment either. He's like, it's just like, well, it's just upstate from where I am, and it's even more expensive there. Yeah, and he had said her whole um, campaign, how she said she was like kind of the uh, ghetto-grown um, grow up poor and he's like uh -huh. she's from like the burbs <laughs> she didn't grow yep. up in the the slums by any stretch right D does and she I look like she she grew up in the slums <laughs> i don't know maybe, maybe she, she cleans just... up nice i don't know yeah but uh on that note is that all you wanted to say about her apartment um yeah i just find it funny I'm... that they're they're making it out to be this noble act even though she raised she had, she's been not Ray. She had a ton of donations from uh, George Soros and everybody else to uh, get her get her in there. Oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. <laughs> okay. I don't even think George Soros is a real person. I think he's just a conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever it's seen? Just a name. A, have you ever seen it's George Soros and conspiracy theory in the same room at the same time? No, they might I have be the not. same thing. All right. What so else you got? on. On a good note for the Democrats and Miss uh, Ocasio Cortez, she is, um, according to the American Mirror, so you know legit. it's legit. Uh, Ocasio Cortez flirts with a run for presidency while dancing and making mac and cheese on Instagram. All those words in one sentence. Yeah, <laughs> the same people that are like. Donald Trump is not presidential enough. Wait, this, this, I mean, they probably find her attractive. This bug-eyed, buck-toothed, uh, uh, beautiful, young, socialist Democrat. Uh, yeah, she's going to run. She's going to get it. Um, she While making mac and cheese and dancing on Instagram. Yeah, she, she got her degree not that long ago in economics or something and uh she's been a bartender uh mixing drinks for a good while and uh she just she won here's the thing she won almost on a post like if you look into the guy she was running against he didn't have a website set up like he was an old dude who Still? had no idea how to do anything he said that you know his accounts were frozen and he couldn't use his money for blah 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 and it was Sounded a little conspiratorial to me, but uh, even to me. But uh, yeah, it's like you you texted me that night and uh, you're like, "Hey, she won." I'm like, "Of course she won. She did not have an opponent. There was no like, you, I don't even remember the guy's name. Nobody heard the guy's name, and you heard her all over the place. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders was pushing for her. You didn't hear Donald Trump no. pushing for nameless guy." <laughs> So this says, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez spent her Friday night making instant mac and cheese while flirting with the idea of running for president in the future. During, Insta during an Instagram Live Q&A session Friday night, the 29-year-old socialist discussed her election victory on Tuesday and flirted with the idea of maybe running for president in the future. While making macaroni and cheese it's and listening to music. It's just as legit as Kanye West flirting with running for president in the future. Actually, it's less legit because if, yeah. if Kanye West ran against her, who do you think would win? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. While making macaroni and cheese and listening to music from a kitchen, the Democratic darling spoke about Shirley Chisholm, an African-American politician and author who died in 2005. Chisholm, this is her quote, Chisholm was the first black woman to ever run for president as a nominee of any major political party. Ocasio Cortez said while pulling cheese out of the grater. Oh, she's making. <laughs> Wait, it said she's making instant mac and cheese. She's grating her own cheese for instant mac and cheese. Wait, she has money to buy cheese and a and a grater and a grater. <laughs> she was a congresswoman out of Brooklyn. She was also the first black woman in Congress. And people asked her when she ran for president in the seventies. 
60s, that's exactly what she said, (laughs) 70s, dot, 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 60s. She continued while forgetting the dates and moving from counter to counter. The socialist went on to say that Chisholm told people that she ran for president because someone had to be first, saying that she knew she was blazing a trail for um for black candidates for um women. <laughs> that's just well, like that's people voting quote. for um Hillary because she's a uh, um woman. Uh, don't care. It, it, can she do the job or can she not? So while grating her cheese and breaking into random dance moves in the kitchen, Ocasio-Cortez appeared sounds to imply like, that she could run for president. Sounds like, a, I don't know, some sort of euphemism or something, like she was taking a shit while grating her cheese. Anyway. <laughs> this is the second time in the past month that if cutting, Ocasio-Cortez... If cutting cheese means farting, then what does grating the great, cheese mean? Right. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> this is the second time in the past month. Well, imagine what melting the cheese means. This is the second time in the past month that Ocasio-Cortez, who recently attacked the electoral system because she can't receive her congressional salary until she becomes a member of Congress, has hinted at a possible president. She doesn't start getting paid until she starts work? Wow. I know. (laughs) So she attacked the electoral system for that because that has everything to do with the electoral system. Right, right. Oh, it shows how much she knows. Does it have a quote about like what she said attacking the electoral system? It just says she can't receive her congressional salary until she becomes a member of Congress. I got hired at on at McDonald's. I start on Wednesday, but I want to be paid today on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I want paid vacation for the next two days. (laughs) While speaking to a small crowd last month in what appeared to be a basement, the socialist (laughs) verbalized her apparent fantasy of being inaugurated. An event reserved for commander in chief. What? I mean, the the sad truth of it is, they're they're grooming her exactly oh, yeah. for that. Oh yeah. They're setting her up for that, and in the near future too. Because I mean, Barack Obama was a very junior congressman right. when he ran for president. He was. I was from the state, and I had never heard of the guy right. until he started running for president. And then all of a sudden, he's like the shining freaking superstar for the democratic party that they threw up and he won i don't i can't say a landslide but he definitely won by a long shot and it's just like who is this guy so clearly he was fast tracked to that position so i definitely think she is the uh female obama being fast tracked to presidency even though she doesn't even know how basic job pay works apparently so i mean go back and work on your economics economics degree i guess (laughs) yeah um yeah i would not be the least bit surprised if she threw her hat in the ring in 2020 just because she can um she's gonna she's gonna think she's gonna have that handed to her just like just like this was sadly enough she probably will yep yep well i don't know I don't think she'd make it very far, but who well, knows in th- today's That day also age. depends on if Hillary decides to stay in it for another round. It, another the rumors brutal keep beating. spreading. The rumors keep spreading. She, I don't. Can she even survive another round, especially running against Donald Trump? <laughs> right. Apparently, um, Bernie's um, throwing around the idea of running again. It's like you're going to be ninety by the time. <laughs> right. As happens. much as I don't want. Ocasio Cortez to be up there uh, telling everybody all the free fun things that they're gonna get, like the uh, like the recess playground president uh, who says that she, they're gonna give free milk and double lunches to everybody when they become president. As Two much as I don't, of ice cream for exactly. every meal. As much as I don't want her there, uh, at least we found some new blood to spew the same stupid talking points as Bernie. We don't have to wheel right. back out to uh, these crippled, feeble old uh, windbags like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was hospitalized oh, after a fall in her. There, o- okay. <laughs> I was just, I'm just going to throw such a out. beautiful segue. I'm sorry. I'll let you get it. I'll let you do it again and do a redo. Much um, like. <laughs> imagine, just imagine an Ocasio Cortez ticket with Bernie Sanders for vice president. <laughs> I think it would probably, I don't know, would it be that way or would it be the other way around? I think if it was the other way around, they'd be like, oh, how dare you not put a woman up? Right. So it'd have to, it would have to go that direction. (laughs) 
Good Lord. I- I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> Just as gone as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was hospitalized after a fall in her... Was that as smooth as the last one? It was It was pretty good still. <laughs> I... I mm, my brain, the way it operates in 2018... Holy cow, somebody's like slamming doors. My brain instantly went to the conspiracy route because, I mean, it was what, the day after the elections? <laughs> that Somebody roughed sudden, her up. <laughs> Because I remember when um, the night of elections and they're like, well, it's time for uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg to step down. Yeah. So because now we have more Democrats to kind of shuffle things around more. It was like the next day, all of a sudden, Ruth Bader Ginsburg falls downstairs, surprisingly, mysteriously. It's just like, really? Seriously? (laughs) Right. She's going to die like two days after the elections. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's sad. I don't want anybody to die, but it's a little bit funny that she broke ribs from falling down. Uh, I mean, people do. I know. uh, Rand Paul was like attacked in his front yard on a lawnmower and beaten up and he jumped back into it uh, virtually unscathed. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg goes out to get the morning paper and dies. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let let me read some of this story. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, was hospitalized Thursday morning after falling in her office Wednesday night, the court announced. Ginsburg, 85, 10 years younger than uh, than Stan Lee, but she looks like she's at least five years older than Stan Lee was when he died. Uh, Ginsburg, 85, went home after the fall but continued to experience discomfort overnight. Yeah, you break three ribs, it's not going to be that comfortable. You probably know that shit. by now, you old windbag. Uh, and she went to uh, George Washington University Hospital early Thursday. Tests revealed she fractured three ribs on her left side, and she was admitted for observation and treatment, according to the court's statement. Uh, the, the fall kept Ginsburg from attending Thursday's formal uh, investiture ceremony. Uh, in, invest, investiture? Investiture ceremony. I don't know that word. I'm a big dumb, dumb, dumb. Uh, ceremony for new associate so this. associate justice Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, so she called in sick. <laughs> I'm not going to be there. I killed myself. Uh, the event attracted President Donald Trump, uh, First Lady Melania Trump, all other Supreme Court justices and leaders of Washington's legal community. Ginsburg, uh, the court's eldest justice, has several... Or has severed, uh, s- damn, has served for 25, Sever- has served for 25, severed sounds bad, <laughs> has served for 25 years after being appointed by President Bill, Bill Clinton in 1993. She is the leader of the court's uh, liberal wing. She is uh, a medical warrior, <laughs> having survived uh, colon cancer in 1999, pancreatic cancer a decade later, a heart stent procedure in 2014, and previ- in a previous bout uh, with broken ribs. These are not her first ribs to be broken. She does not go down easily, <laughs> after all. She's, she's still <laughs> kicking the old bird. Uh, she works out with a personal trainer twice weekly in the Supreme Court's gym to the beat of the PBS... At 85? To the beat ever- of the PBS News Hour. She works out to that. To the to the beat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, the PBS News Hour. That, that, that's what I work out to, too. Also, news to me, the Supreme Court has a gym. Did not know that. <laughs> not I sure. Mean, they have to. They not, have to. Not sure what that's for. You know, they probably have their own private gym at home. Yeah, it's surprising to me that at 85 year, years old, you still have a personal trainer and you're working out. I plan to be in a wheelchair, not moving any more than possible, <laughs> making people do it for me at 85. I thought she just like lived like at her desk at the Supreme Court and they just like laid her down when she was done giving her ruling and then they propped her back up when it was time for her to vote again. She's got like an auto, one of those auto recliners that you just hit a button and more, it's like and sits more, more like a Frankenstein experiment table uh, that, where she's just strapped into it and it just like tilts her all the way up. <laughs> and she's so short though that it looks like she's sitting when she's propped up. Uh, <sighs> yeah. We're, we are like terrible terrible uh, humans that's fine um she's old um but yeah so th- there's that she's she's, she's i mean really isn't going. she just a leech on 
leech on the medical care system right now? <laughs> I mean, after your third or fourth major issue, shouldn't you be at your max? Right. Like insurance and like car insurance companies, they cut you off after you've had like three accidents. It's like, you're too much of a liability. We're cutting you off. Right. And I like how, uh, you know, people called out like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump for their age when they were running, asking if they were fit to run because of mental health issues and blah, blah, blah. It's like, how old do you have to be to uh, before they're like, OK, you actually you need to go. You need to step down. And of course, they won't. She is. She's deciding what's constitutional right. in this United States. Which is a completely in this country. different United States than she grew up with and knew. Right. And she, at, at 85, jamming to the beat of the PBS <laughs> NewsHour, has all, all the me- mental capability to, to declare what is and what is not law. I know there's a what video is- out there of her doing a workout. Somebody find that and send it to me, and I'm going to make it into part of an intermission video and put the PBS NewsHour jam session over it. And Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should um, cut up like a PBS News segment and put it to a beat just for her <laughs> <laughs> workout Have session. like a Sesame Street theme music or something. <laughs> right, exactly. Anyway. Oh, man. Politics, politics. There's so much bullshit going on. Speaking of politics, did you hear about politics? No, did you hear about uh, Tucker Carlson? I heard he possibly may have gotten an altercation with somebody. I can't even remember who it was. It was some, I don't know. I don't remember who it was. All right. I'll just read it. And uh, in this headline, it calls Antifa a mob, so you know it's right wing leaning <laughs> uh you know it's legit yeah this comes from the political insider so you know it's legit uh tucker carlson's home attacked by antifa the dirty m word mob a mob of antifa social justice warriors <laughs> yeah we can see which way this is going um began harassing not that they're wrong began harassing and chanting threats outside uh the home of tucker carlson wednesday night and the group uh, banged on his front door as the Fox News host's wife was inside, the mob warned Carlson that he and his family are not safe. Quote, each night you remind us that we are not safe. Uh, the the group smash racism. Remind us we're not safe, so we're going to <laughs> threaten you. Storm your house. Right. The group smash racism DC posted on social media. Uh, quote, tonight we remind you that you are not safe either. Well, if... If okay, if Tucker Carlson is promoting people that uh, you know change legislation that makes these uh, little liberal crazies um, feel not safe, then that's making him not safe already too. Like the legislation applies to news anchors as well. Um, I don't know why you think otherwise. Um, anyway, chance by the radical left organization included. Quote, racist scumbag, leave town, and we will fight. We know where you sleep at night. That's that's nice, that's friendly fair to banter. Say. Well, that's fair to say, considering you're outside of his house. Right. It's, <laughs> we know I where mean, you sleep at you. night. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Mr. Obvious show, <laughs> Mr. Obvious guy on the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> right. We know your address. We know where you live. Well, well, well <laughs> listener, um, I think. It's fair to assume that that um, that you know where the guy sleeps at night. <laughs> yes, Carlson and his wife uh, have four children, though thankfully none of the children were home at the time of the attack. Make no mistake, this is an act of terrorism, trying to intimidate conservative commentator and his family with threats that they know uh, where he sleeps at night is terrorism, and members of the mob should be charged accordingly. Uh, Tuckerson describes the frightening attack by Antifa. In a phone interview with the Washington Post, Tucker described how things went down at his home uh, with uh, his wife, his wife's fear and actual physical attacks that damaged the home. Quote, I called my wife. Uh, she had been in the kitchen alone getting ready to go to dinner and she heard pounding on the front door and screaming. Someone started throwing himself against the door and uh, actually cracked the front door. Wow, that's dedication. Yeah, so it's funny that they're 
and, I, and we always say this is like you guys are saying that Trump is bringing on like the purge and like all these crazy outlandish things like he's the, some sort of uh, dictator who's going to go out and attack people, strip them from their homes and make them feel unsafe. And like the, this sounds like a scene scripted into the purge. <laughs> like you guys are acting out your own fear. I don't understand. This is what the left wants. Yeah. Um, Tucker Carlson more recently was in the news because he was seen in a video cursing during a bar scuffle. Cursing. Okay. Cursing. And? Um, apparently. Is that still a problem? Apparently he was defending his daughter. From what I've seen, I'm pretty sure um, somebody called his daughter a whore. And a this was the quote I saw. It was a... C star and T. That obviously means can't. Yes. Yes. <laughs> was, it it says, apost- was it an apostrophe T? <laughs> says in a statement released by attorney Michael Avenatti. What? That guy does not go away. Oh, no, he does not. He's like every sleazy person's attorney. It says in a statement released by attorney Michael Avenatti, a country club patron said he may pursue criminal charges against Tucker Carlson after cell phone video showed the Fox News host appearing to threaten him during a scuffle at the bar. You better get the fuck out of here, Carlson yells repeatedly in the October 13th video. Can you can you charge somebody for that? Nope. <laughs> As Juan Manuel. It's the or else that is the problem. <laughs> right. As Juan Manuel Grand... Granados sits at Farmington Country Club Bar in Charlottesville. A moment later, an unidentified man standing with Carlson grabs Granados by his collar. So Tucker Carlson didn't grab him. The man with him grabbed him by his collar and appears to yank him up from his seat, at which point bystanders break up the confrontation. Carlson has not disputed the incident that took place and even volunteered that his son threw a glass of wine in Granado's face just before the video began. Man, I wish we'd have seen that part because right. that's like that's like movie theater, movie type right. <laughs> stuff. It's there. like taking so, off your glove and slapping them in the face with it. <laughs> exactly. But the conservative new, news host denied assaulting Granados and accused him of provoking the scuffle by insulting Carlson's daughter. It took enormous enormous self-control not to beat the man with the chair which is what i wanted to do carlson wrote in a statement but he didn't <laughs> after he had avenatti. the control not to do that <laughs> so you know avenatti is just following people around trying to get dirt on republicans because he was uh wasn't he stormy daniels lawyer yeah, yeah. and so he's now he's gonna th- run for president also and he knows that he would beat donald trump now, oh, of course, obviously. Now he the is this lawyer. guy, this <laughs> random nobody bar scuffler guy's lawyer, mm-hmm. just because um, Tucker Carlson used profanity. He's like against fucking him. Saul Goodman. He's like just he's like a car chaser, like a lawyer who just follows people around looking for something that he can put his name on that he thinks he can win easily, or at least so get him here, some attention. Here's the issue that um, got it started, I guess. Says. Um, on their way back to the bar, a middle-aged man stopped my daughter and asked if she was sitting with Tucker Carlson. Upon learning she was the right-wing commentator's daughter, Carlson said, the man responded, are you Tucker's whore, and called her a misogynist slur, misogynistic slur. I'm guessing that was the cunt word that mm-hmm. they're not saying, yeah. the misogynistic. I think whore is pretty much a misogynistic, <laughs> misogynistic slur, yeah. too. <laughs> yep. So it, then his son threw the glass of wine in the man's face and told him to leave the bar, which he soon did. So, man, T- Tucker's not catching a break. Um, he's getting threats. He's throwing glasses of wine. This is well, going to end up is... the same as Donald Trump. Like, all this bullshit is going to make me want to like Tucker Carlson. It's going to force me to be on his side. And I don't want to be right. on his side. I mean, he's not. He's not terrible, in my opinion, but I don't want to support any of these people. But when you go out and you act like animal children, I have no choice but to say he's right, you're wrong. Because even if he's doing things that I disagree with and pushing for more taxes or whatever, he's not doing he's not attacking you in your home when only when your wife is home alone. 
You know, we've gotten to the point where this is just the equivalent of monkeys throwing feces at each other. That's all it is. We're just pulling shit out of our rear and throwing it at each other and then getting mad that the other person got mad at us. Yeah. um, Did you look into that? uh, There was like some protest for uh, the Republicans were protesting something right after the election because I posted in the forum asking if anybody saw any Republicans out crying or, you know, burning things or uh, mobbing. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Archer posted a he said, look up this thing. I looked it up briefly. It was like Republicans protesting. With signs and things, and I think they were standing in the way of something that, which is dumb. Curses. Yeah, I, I don't like people standing in the way of things. I think if you're standing in the middle of the uh, freeway, yeah, you have the right to be ran over. In my opinion, no matter which side you're on, because it, it that's wasn't just in the free. I think they science. were sto- stopping somebody who was wearing a wrong shirt from walking in a certain area or something. I don't know. I should look into it so I don't seem too um, biased here, but. It still, I didn't see any burning of anything or anybody like being beaten up or having their hair lit on fire like the left has done Mm. or pulling switchblades or cracking people's front doors or terrorizing um, their family. I haven't seen that. So, your move. Yeah, yeah. Freaking, I mean, it's just turned into the biggest shit show fortunately the house at least turned blue because can you imagine the extremes that it would have gone Mm -hmm. if if it had gone more more red than already yeah currently is yep (laughs) i am fine with it i don't really care i nothing's going to change they're both pretty much the same anyway if it went all red on both if there was a red wave oh There'd be blood in the streets. There'd be a literal red wave of blood in the streets. (laughs) Right. Well, I'm ready to get out of politics if you are. Get get Um, into some... I don't think I have anything else on politics. Let me see. I think that's it. Give me something else good. So, in capitalist news and um, big corporation news, I mean, this, this this is just an atrocity here. Under Armour employees are no longer allowed to expense strip club visits. Can you believe that? Are no longer allowed to what? Expense strip club visits. As in like using petty cash from the company to go to strip yes. clubs? Yes. The outrage. <laughs> right? Why I mean why was that a why thing? Why would you even work <laughs> why would you even work there anymore? Right. It says Under Armour used to foot used to foot the bill for strip club visits, the Wall Street Journal reports. The athletic okay. apparel company emailed employees earlier this year informing them that this practic- this practice is no longer allowed. The company sell or tells CNBC that it will continue to address inappropriate behavior as it strives to create a respectful and inclusive workspace. That's not uninclusive, in right. my opinion. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to go to the strip You're clubs if they go. want. You're allowed to go. You might not like it. Under Armour says it's committed to providing a respectful and inclusive workspace. How about uh, the general reports? That why, why, Armour... is, why is that the direction we're going? We're, we're going to make it all inclu- we're going to make it inclusive, and women feel left out, so nobody goes to the strip club. How about we start there, and we don't <laughs> spend company money on anybody going to the strip right. club I to begin with? I don't understand why that was a here. thing. I was going to say, there's a bigger issue here for the company than just like being <laughs> They don't respectful. feel the need to explain why that was a thing to begin with. <laughs> the Journal reported that Under Armour executives employees used to take colleagues and athletes to strip clubs. People familiar, which that I'm kind of start. I mean, it's stupid, I, I guess. But right. companies have – big companies like that when they're trying to get um, – Get in good standing with – Potential with clients, clients and stuff. Yeah, they they take them to golf clubs and stuff like that. Wine and dined in sixty nine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they take them out. They take them to the most expensive golf resort, and it's all expense paid just to schmooze on them and get get their opinion. So I guess that part doesn't surprise me. That after a good day on the golf course, they ended up at the strip clubs. Probably went sure. to dinner first. Went to the strip clubs and. All this was paid you would still on the think company that died. In 2018, that that would be a bit frowned upon. Like taking sure. them out, whining and dining them, sure. But 
you know. Well, it is frowned upon now, apparently. Says, right. I uh, mean, like, socially, outside of just they're taking them to, to see women strip instead of taking them to see men strip. You would think it would, you'd think it would reflect poorly on the company when people found out, yeah, they're taking their clients out to strip clubs and probably doing drug. I mean, my first thought is they're probably doing drugs and getting prostitutes too. And that wouldn't surprise me at all. Not that I care. Put it on the to. company bill too. Yeah, But you, you would think that it would be a matter of business etiquette and having, maintaining a certain, you know, a certain look for your company to not yeah. do that. <laughs> I, I don't know. It says in 50s. a statement in a statement to CNBC, Under Armour said it has addressed these allegations and will continue to address inappropriate workplace behavior. The quote says, we have addressed these serious allegations. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> they addressed it. We have addressed it. <laughs> addressed the serious allegations of the past. And we'll continue that to address happened. this. Is just repeating what the guy, reporter just said. <laughs> right. <laughs> Inappropriate behavior that challenges our values and violates our policies is unacceptable. Apparently, it doesn't challenge. Apparently, you don't have those values right. if it was Does allowed it, to begin with. Right. Did it really violate your policies? If so, then that's all that needs to be discussed here. And that's that's where I would think they would have started, but. Trips know. to strip clubs on the corporate card were among practices at Under Armour that women at the company found demeaning. The journal reported citing more than a dozen current and former employees. Hmm. <sighs> well, I'm glad they're just now to the point where they realize maybe this is a bad idea. Only, only because it became public. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> it says... Clearly, it's saying we have addressed these serious allegations. It's like the um, the Under Armour spokesperson didn't know this was happening to begin with. Right. Those expense bills go back oh, to somebody. Yeah. It's somebody well sees known. where it's going. It Those was, receipts it was known. This is no surprise. Yeah, yeah it, like I said, it's only coming up. Outraged. All right, it's only coming up, and they're only addressing it because it became public, right. and now they're it's like, the, I I'm, guess I'm, we should probably. It's the I'm not. It's not. I'm sorry that I did it. It's, I'm sorry I got caught. So we should probably stop doing this now. Exactly. Exactly. I just thought that was, and that was like a headline on CNBC. It's just like that. That's the news. This is yep. the news we're talking about now. Yep. That is that is the news. And with that, I think we should wrap up this main episode, and we'll do a, a brief uh, bonus episode for. Uh, members of the Downers Club, and sorry that it was uh, a real shit show at the beginning, and hopefully this makes up for it not being live tonight. Hopefully this this short little show informed you enough that uh, you, you feel like you can still go through your week uh, fulfilled. Fulfilled that you've right. gotten the anti-news. And if you are a member of the Downers Club, you will get the bonus episode that will be available at the same time where we're going to cover a few more stories and shoot the shit for a little bit longer and uh, wrap things up for the week. So, um, Craig, any final thoughts on this? Um, Final thoughts. I'm just glad that election's over, first of all. Yeah. I'm glad YouTube instantly stopped playing all these stupid political ads, yeah. and I can watch the more bullshitty ads that they come up with now. For Under Armour and strip clubs. Exactly. <laughs> what if Under Armour opens its own strip club? <laughs> <laughs> then it would be okay, but it'd have to be a gay strip club or a, a male strip club, whatever. Um, but yeah, all that said, thank you guys for listening. Um, tune in next week. Hopefully we'll have all these kinks and problems figured out so we can get back to our usual broadcast, uh, our, our typical scheduled, I'm not going to call it programming because it's not, we're not here to make you think certain ways or are we? Um, mm -hmm. so Craig, uh, question everything and, uh, stay, stay on, on. Comfortable. Comfortable. Antinewslive.com. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Sorry for the trouble. All right, we're out. So here's my pledge to you. I will be a commander-in-chief that will have the back of the military. I won't trash talk. I won't be a divider-in-chief or an agitator-in-chief. I won't be out there blowharding, talking a big, big game without backing it up. I think the next president needs to be a lot quieter, but send a signal 
that we're prepared to act in the national security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap.